Hi, my name is Laura Batante, and this is my YouTube channel, My Two Bits. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to make these really adorable little monster boxes that are just perfect for Halloween. And if you go to my website, mytwobits.ca, you can download the template uh, that includes the little feature bits as well as the outline for the actual box and all you need is some cardstock that is eight and a half by eleven now just before we get started cutting out the template um, I just want to recommend cutting with an exacto knife and uh, it just makes you, your lines straighter and it makes it a little bit easier of course you don't have to and I know if you're working with kids, then it's maybe not a possibility. But if you do uh, work with an X-Acto knife, I'm going to recommend, A, you get yourself a uh, stainless steel ruler like this. Uh, that way you won't come up and cut if it's like plastic. It's super easy for the blade to come shooting up. The other thing is you can get yourself um, one of these X-Acto knives. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're very cheap. And... Um, do get this kind and not like a utility knife that the blade snaps off because those just aren't steady. You need to really be able to make sure that you're getting a nice straight line. This one's mine. It's just a little bit softer handle, but you don't need that fancy stuff. I used one of these for years. And um, also a self-healing mat. Now, again, if you don't have a self-healing mat, um, a couple of layers of some cardboard underneath from the recycling bin will work perfectly well. All right, so before I started uh, cutting out on my cardstock, I trimmed my uh, two edges here just so that that would save me uh, two cuts. And it also saves me a little bit of paper. Another tool that I love and I use a lot in my paperwork is uh, removable tape. And that way I can just um, put it down on the board and I don't have to worry about my paper tearing or anything because um, it comes off really easily. So uh, if you're doing it this way with a knife like myself, I like to um, do my cuts and my score lines at the same time. So I'm going to cut, which is a solid line, and then I'm going to flip my blade over and I'm going to score the dotted line. And then I'll, I'll just move over and you don't have to do it this way. It's how I do it, just to make sure I get everything done at the same time. And it's absolutely essential that you score, um, whether you're cutting with a knife or if you're cutting with scissors. You can score, as you've maybe seen me do with other projects, you can score with like um, a thumbtack or anything really. You just need to kind of break the surface of the paper so that it folds nicely. Okay, and while I have it here, I am going to score here. Super hard for me to see from this angle because the camera is right over my head, but we'll hope for the best. Okay, and um, so I will just finish making these cuts and then um, we'll come back and carry on. Okay, so there we go. Um, for this last um, cut right here, I did actually use my scissors. Uh, I just find that a little bit easier for curves. And um, now we are ready to fold away. You can see that I have the score lines all along. And so we're just gonna fold on those. I could have probably scored that even a little bit deeper. It does make it so much easier. And this way you get a nice crisp line. What you don't want is your line to go all willy wonky on you. Okay, there we go. And we'll fold up the bottom. And then all we have to do is um, put some glue on and we're good. And um, some of you might be wondering how I come up with a template in the first place. For this particular one, I wrapped a box of pudding mix. And um, I just happened to know from 
previous experience that that's a good size um, for a treat bag. So that's what I did. Okay, so now, don't need that anymore. We're just gonna put a little glue on the short side here. And fold it up and it doesn't have to be, uh, you don't have to worry about all the other bits right now. We just wanna get this on. wanting to slide for me so we'll just there we go okay and we'll just let that dry for a minute and then we'll glue the bottom all right so for gluing the bottom I like to make sure that the flap here this is the going to be the front like it's going to be basically the mouth of the monster so this is the front of the box so I like to make sure that this is the last piece folded down and that's just so that you don't see this seam this seam when it's facing front it's just a little neater uh, it's not um, going to be a huge crisis if you happen to mess up and glue the wrong piece alrighty so glue that down and so, um, as I was mentioning, like I, I made this off of a, a pudding box. So if you wanted to, like if you were in need of some sort of really odd shaped um, package, um, say something long and skinny, and you could easily, you know, wrap something yourself. It's just like wrapping a package. You're just going to leave the one end open. And um, like, say, for example, like a box of spaghetti, easily you could do that. And then you would have yourself a nice, long, thin um, box. So next step, we are going to pinch the top together. And I like to go about halfway down. And yeah, it's it, it actually bends really easily. And we're just lining up the edges there like that. And there you go. And then you can see how that would close. And then for closing it, you can use um, double-sided tape or um, some very small, uh, the little Velcro buttons because these are really sturdy and they will last you a long time. And you know what I forgot to tell you was, silly me, that right you can hole punch right here at the back to make this handle. And I don't know why I forgot to do that. But we can do that right now. Um, I have a little hole punch like this. I use a lot. And so we just put that in there. Looks like I needed to wait a second more on my gluing. As always, I'm busting ahead here trying to get it done in a hurry. So, um, yeah, so if you want to have it so that it can be carried like that, go for it. Punch some holes right there. And I am just going to touch up my glue, and then we'll move on to the features. Okay, so um, one thing I probably could have mentioned before was that if you're like me and you're not super patient on waiting for glue to dry, you could totally use double-sided tape for this project. It would work great. Um, so now I've cut out some features. Ignore that. I just happen to be a bit of a... A conservationist with the paper because I use a lot of paper in my work every day so I when I can I do try to um, save it so um, if you have these sorts of punches at home you can totally use these to cut out eyes um, it will give you a, a lovely line but if not just cut around I cut everything that I did by hand and well these um, irises here are um, I mean pupils are used with a hole punch for this particular one but I've done uh, tons of these and not that guy he doesn't have features um, I just cut them by hand 
I think it's uh, nice. They then look like they're handmade and um, I think that gives it a special quality. So, but if you want it to be super spiffy, go ahead and use the hole punch. Okay. And um, I wrote on the stencil, you know, make as many or whatever as you want because this is the fun part is deciding um, look, I have even more, is deciding what kind of features that you want. So this is the very first guy I made, and then I decided when I was sitting there looking at him that he really needed braces. I'm not going to show you how to put braces on today. It's a bit fussy, but all it is is some wire um, from the dollar store. I cut it, and I glued it on, and um, it's a fun little detail, and, you know, it gives them some extra character, but... Yeah, play around with it. I, I give you three different types of um, teeth. So I have these little round teeth. I have this little guy here, and then I have um, these ones here, and they're just put in at different heights. That's what gives them the, the fact that they look different there. All right, so let's cut out some eyeballs. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, go over cutting uh, circles because um, some people uh, may not know but uh, when you're cutting you really want to get the paper right here you don't want to cut like this because it makes for uneven and then what I'm doing is with my left hand I'm actually turning the paper so I'm making a cut and I'm turning and that's how you get the smoothest cut for corners, like for turning like that. Okay, there we go. Not perfect, but not bad either. So this is the fun part, deciding what you want your monster to look like. Um, I have given you several options, but don't feel limited by that. I mean, do what you want. I just p sort of put stuff on and play around with it. You could have one eye, you could have two eyes, you could have three eyes. I mean, they are monsters. And um, I kind of like two eyes where uh, they're different sizes. And uh, same with the teeth. I've given you, like, as I said before, three different options, but you could totally um, design your own teeth. So the only one thing that I do is I kind of, not in this case, but I generally try to have like, if I have two eyes, I've got like one tooth or three teeth. Here I have one eye, two, and here I have two and three. But he looks equally cute with two and two. Um, I don't know, I just kind of do it that way. But like I said, do whatever you want because creating monsters is indeed fun. I think I almost never go straight in the middle, but that would probably be equally cute. Um, now, what am I going to do here? I think I will put some... Um, also, you could use googly eyes. Um, some of you may be surprised to see that I'm not using googly eyes because I, I do use them a lot, but um, I like the idea of making this all paper. And um, you do have a, a few more options. For sure you could do like colored irises and then um, add in the pupils too. So that's just another layer. And the one thing though is super important is um, you're gluing halfway, you're gluing the eye on halfway. So if you don't wanna be gluing the eyes on with it open like this and then trying to shut it because it can't be attached to the back. So if you're gonna do a googly eye, and I do have giant googly eyes, you might wanna go maybe three quarters of the way down on the googly eye just so that it's really secure attached to this. But again, your choice. Okay, so let's just glue these eyes on and then 
we are done. One thing that you could do that might make it a smidge easier is actually put the um, double-sided tape or the Velcro on before you start trying to um, attach features just because um, you have to keep closing it. <laughs> but uh, your, your call on that too, either or works. You just have to hold it closed while you work on it. Okay, there you go. I think he looks really cute, um, as do all of them. And they're easy to make. And because they're cardstock, I think they will last for a good long time. And um, just super fun. So enjoy that craft. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. And um, also consider subscribing to my channel. I do have um, lots more videos coming up, lots of Christmas stuff coming up. So... Stay tuned.